Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nikki V. I'm a studio musician and producer here in Nashville. And I thought today might be fun to talk about why certain musicians get the call for the gig. So we're on day two of a two day tracking session. The artist is a cat named Chris from Colorado. Um, super cool songs all over the map stylistically. Yesterday we did like a New Orleans kind of Delta blues thing. And then we do like a typical singer songwriter acoustic ballad and then like this industrial rock thing. So it's super fun project. Uh, we're doing eight songs in two days, so four, four tunes a day, uh, two days of doubles. And two days of doubles means that you're doing two sessions in one day. And a session is typically three hours. And today, for example, it's 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., which is pretty standard. And then at 1 p.m., you take a one-hour lunch break. My wife brings in catering for everybody if I'm producing. Then you start back up at 2 p.m. and you go 2 to 5. And so we're doing two songs in the morning and two songs in the afternoon. And the reason that we're doing that instead of three, which is a lot of the times you'll see most people doing like a song an hour, um, it's because I wanted to give us a little more time to kind of dial in on sounds and dig deep for parts and not just fly through everything. And I thought this would be an interesting opportunity to talk about who gets the call and why they get the call, like when I'm producing, basically who I select to play on the record. And it's a number of reasons. Usually it's whoever's the best fit for the song or the project. You're trying to get the best product at the end of it, right? So you need the right people in the right seat. And other times there's other factors involved. Sometimes you want to call people that are also great at getting work and other producers that are going to pull you back in on their projects. And so you keep each other working a lot. And there's some musicians that are amazing players, but they're never going to go out and shake hands and they're not friendly enough to go out and necessarily find clients. or they just didn't come from an era where that happened. They had labels hiring producers and producers calling them and they just, it's just a one way street. And now I think it's changed a little bit to where you have to work with people that are also good at getting work because the industry is a little bit tougher now. And today, though, that's not the case. Today, I called the musicians I called specifically because they are incredibly kind and they're patient and they're cool and easy to get along with. And the reason I did that is because the artist today, Chris, is a bass player. He's a great bass player and he obviously knows his own songs and he asked if he could play on the session. That is not a very typical thing that happens here at all, like ever. That I've never been on a session where like the artist wants to play on the record and it's okay. And Chris is a great bass player and he wants to play on his own record, which is super cool. And Chris is the one cutting the checks. And so I worked it out with them. I was like, man, I was like, this is not a typical situation. Usually, you know, I hire musicians that I can trust. We can keep on schedule and deliver a certain quality that you're paying me to deliver. But I listened to his demos and he's a really good player. And I was like, man, let's do this. Because of that though, that limits who I can call. And people want to say, oh, that's not how it works, but it is. If you bring in somebody that's an outsider or isn't like a session guy, they can get vibed out. People will be weird about it and possibly be hard on them, even if they're the one cutting the check and the reason we're all there. So I called Tim McDonald, who's easygoing, super nice guy, and Steve Brewster, who is an absolute heavyweight musician, played on every record in town. And he is so patient and kind. If you're wanting a kind drummer to guide a bass player that's not used to that environment, through the or navigate the, the ins and outs and nuances of playing on a record you're going to want steve brewster there to communicate with him because number one he has the experience number two he's kind of communicate hey man you know check out this kick pattern this baseline might work better don't play there and i called steve ahead of time and told him what the deal was and asked him if he was open to it and he was like of course because he's great and we did a whole session yesterday four songs with a guy that hasn't played on a ton of records and he did fantastic because he had steve and Tim guiding him through it along with me. And also the engineer is a fantastic bass player. He's also happens to be like my favorite engineer in town. His name's Greg Collins. And he's a like amazing producer as well. I knew if there was an issue, I could lean on Greg, Steve, or Tim to help him out if I'm, because I'm producing and playing guitar and acoustic and electric on this already. So I've kind of had my hands full. So I put a team around me that can support me and help me through this process with somebody that's not as experienced as the rest of us in this environment. And I'm thankful for those guys. And I thought this might be an interesting opportunity to talk about why people get the call for certain gigs. So I'll be tracking the electric parts today and I'll introduce you to all the guys and kind of show you what the studio is like. It's down on Music Road. It's a um, great Collins studio as well. It's a beautiful place and sounds incredible. Drum sounds are huge. So appreciate you guys hanging out. If you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe and I'll do my best to keep these little behind the scenes videos coming. Another thing I wanted to mention is I told Chris um, when we first started talking about doing the project, I said, man, I said, you know, you're hiring me to provide a great product and I need to be able to reserve the right if things aren't working out musically to call an audible and call in one of my friends, call Martin or James Cook or Jacob Lowry or somebody um, to come in and cover on day two. And Chris totally smashed it yesterday. He did great and um, hung right there. In Nashville, everything happens pretty lightning fast. And so even if you, you can play your own songs, sometimes it's hard keeping up with the pace of everybody. 
but that's also why we're doing two songs and sessions because it just it's a nice steady pace and we actually all got done an hour early yesterday which is nice and let everybody be rush hour home so another example of exactly what i was just talking about i just got a phone call from steve brewster on the way up he's driving up from franklin i'm driving down from the north side he goes hey man i just want to check in and make sure everything's cool yesterday and if there's anything else i can do be doing to help that right there is what it's about and he's offered some you know cool words of encouragement and um steve's always helping the next generation of cats which is really cool with him you know those guys don't have to do that and he's been a champion for the next generation of studio guys coming up and um as long as steve brewster wants to play on records he'll be getting the call now we're down on Music Row. All these are publishing houses and studios. ASCAP, BMI are back there. So you'll see the signs here in front of everyone. So there's like a Dylan Scott single that just came out. Lee Bryce. There's Starstruck, which is, I did another video there a while back you guys liked. People always ask what Music Row is, so I thought I'd just kind of show you around a little bit. And then now they're tearing down for condos, obviously. But that's the way it goes. Then you run the alley gauntlet, dodging trash cans. And here we are. Yeah, that felt better. I think, so I need to punch. Yesterday was a helicopter something or other. A helicopter whirly or whatever. Yeah. Like, who would use that, you know? And then we used it. We used it. <laughs> we, we are who used it. <laughs> right, I man. love this computer Sorry, scene, by the way. Song, you know, and they all it's like it's like a punk Green Day song, all of a sudden. And with the Mel Nine there. Cool, and then I'll do the riff at the very end. Same. Uncle Chilios, man. Uncle Chilios. Oh. Same time, which is kind of strange. Two of mine over here. Some wifey brings catering for everybody. And then what are you looking at? <laughs> So we got three of the four songs down today. Greg's putting a giant stereo ping pong delay on it. And uh, we got Chris over there. Chris is the artist playing bass with us. We got Mr. T-Mac, Tim McDonald, everybody. Keys, Savant. We got Drew, our assistant engineer today. Mr. Steve Bruce, the legend over here. Hanging out in the staircase like a hoodlum. <laughs> Try, try it one more time, man. I think you're dialing okay. it on it now. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, let's do the whole breakdown again. I think he's getting it. Bruce about to bless us with the tambourine ministry yeah, on that's this. The, that's what it kind of arcs back to. There's a tambourine well, man. I think out of these five songs, out of these eight songs, three are from well, let me, days let me, of yore. Let me play this a bit of this Look at that. real quick. Dinner and show. I was Another comment section is always wondering. So, signal chain. We're going to the Mel 9 for like Mellotron sounds. Pick this up just for the session and it's amazing. Going to be putting on some board somewhere. From there we go. I can't remember how this is wired up, but I think it goes to the Archer Select. Then the Nobles ODR1 Anniversary. Then to the Univer, which is kind of like J-Rocket's Univibe. It's amazing. Into a tape delay from J-Rocket. 
And this is the Owen Berry Custom Boost. This is the prototype. And um, it's been on most of the day, it's amazing. And there we go to my main studio board, volume pedal, tuner. This is another little o ODR Mini that I just painted different into an EQ so I can carve out some low end from it since it doesn't have the bass cut. Um, fuzz, AC booster, it's kind of like a AC30 flavored overdrive into a dude from J-Rocket, it's my favorite high gain. To the Mobius, Timeline, Reverb. From there, we are going to a third power clean sync. And this is like an AC30 and a Fender in one. So this one's voiced kind of like a like a brown face now. It's a little more midi. Um, it has a blend knob on the top, so you can go from American to British if you want. It also has a top boost switch. I kept on the American most of the day, and sometimes I kind of blend the two a little bit. That's kind of where I keep the amp most of the day. And from there it goes to a cabinet over there in the other room somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Steve Brewster, the one and only. Steve, do you have any advice for people maybe wanting to kind of get into this line of work and figure out the studio side of things? Well, there's a lot of things, uh, really, like preparation is key. So the concept of when the door opens, be prepared and ready to walk through it. So be able to have your sounds together, whatever instrument you play, be able to learn stuff, learn songs quickly, be able to... Um, just have your uh, music vocabulary together as far up on current styles and trends, know your history, you know, and just be, you know, work on uh, creating parts, just all those kinds of things that, that um, and do it fast. So, you know, preparation at home on your own time, I think is, is really one of the biggest uh, things that you can do for yourself to be prepared when the door opens. Exactly. And Steve's got all the, all the grooves, man. Yesterday I learned a new one. It was the, what was it, like Lazy Wayland Hippie Groove or something? <laughs> Called, like, I, I loved it. It was kind of like a hat that's like cross me in half time and full time. I think, that, cool. man, you know, you just got to, you know, continue to be a student of music and don't ever stop listening to, to new things and things that challenge you. And look outside, you know, the, the, the normal boxes that you gravitate towards challenge yourself challenge your ear and your music vocabulary and just try to keep expanding and just remain you know keep kind of a student's heart you know keep learning um and and adding to your your vocabulary i love That's that important. and it definitely applies to what we did the last eight songs with yeah, this project they're all over absolutely. the map and and you know be a good listener yeah. like uh you know listen to what the other cats are playing you know when you're when you've got headphones on and don't just like listen to yourself and i mean because just how you fit your parts in with the vocal and how how you fit your parts in with all the other players that's what makes that's what separates you know the giants from the guys that are pretty good to me yep Ser uh, serving that vocal yeah yeah steve i appreciate you man thank yeah. you buddy all right Ladies and gentlemen, this is our artist, Chris Arndt. It's A-R-N-D-T, if you want to look him up. And your last project is called The Doc Project, correct? That's right. Yeah, and, and I'll um, probably still record music under The Doc Project. Okay, perfect. So when all this music comes out, you guys can check it out like that. And I'll put a link to everything down in the description as well. But man, you're from Colorado, Telluride, correct? Yes. And you just got down here to Nashville to record some music, and everything's cool, man. What would you think about it all? It was great. I mean, I think the it all starts in the pre-production. And so we did six weeks or, you know, even maybe two months of pre-production and that helped out a lot because we could start to sort out ideas in pre-production and then we were super organized when we, you know, started here two days ago. So eight songs in two days, it's pretty fast. It's like a funnel that narrows right when you get into it but if you're organized that helps a lot awesome man and you did fantastic jumping in here playing bass you don't live in this environment every day and all the guys are super cool man and you i was you, just trying to keep up no you absolutely held your own man it was great you're a fantastic sport and i came very prepared man which is what steve said earlier steve said it's all about preparation and you definitely came prepared man so appreciate you having your ducks in a row appreciate you hanging out with the guys and just being a good sport with everything buddy no thanks a lot nicky yeah man this is sport that great awesome time to load it all up well, that's it, gang. We did eight songs in two days. If you guys have music or want to get recorded here in Nashville, just reach out to me through my website. It's called nashvilletracking.com. I'll put a link down in the description. And um, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. I do my best to answer everybody. And sometimes it's a lot, but I, I try to get to everybody. And uh, if you like this stuff, please like and subscribe. Really appreciate you guys hanging out and hope you enjoyed it. See ya.